How about that? It's first time in that's, weeks. That seems weird. <clears throat> Good evening and welcome to the Village of Lombard Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, July 25th, 2017, and I hope all is well. At this time, I'd like to ask our Public Works Director, Mr. Carl Goldsmith, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Sharon, can we have a roll call, please? President Gennario. Here. Trustee Whittington. Here. Trustee Fugio. Here. Trustee Potsnevich. Here. Trustee Johnston. Here. Trustee Pike. Here. Trustee Ware. Here. Uh, was there anybody in the audience who would like to speak before the board? I don't have any uh, sign-up sheets. Okay. And we have, so no public participation. Items for separate action. Before I have Sharon read that, I will toss it over to Scott for a PowerPoint presentation. Okay, bear with me a minute while the screen comes down. The new PowerPoint presentation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mayor and Board, uh, for meeting this evening. Uh, I'll be presenting a brief PowerPoint regarding uh, the <coughs> items that are on the Village Board agenda for tonight's discussion. Well, I certainly know that all the members of the Board are well-versed in the points to be presented. We do respect the fact that we have citizens at home that might watch this, and ultimately citizens that might pull this up on our website and view it at home as well. So I'll be going through the PowerPoint, understanding that the citizens of Lombard are the ultimate audience for it. Certainly, if there's a question or a point that you want me to give further explanation to or uh, hone in on, don't hesitate. Uh, I will also say that in the name of transparency and open communication, um, this information will be provided tomorrow via our village website and social media outlets. Understanding the debt restructuring of the Lombard Public Facilities Corporation. In order to better understand this, it would be good to have some historical content. Uh, the property, uh, the LPFC owned property, uh, dates back to 2003 when state legislation was passed that created the Lombard Public Facilities Corporation. For most people, a common comparison might be McPeer uh, which operates and owns Navy Pier and the McCormick uh, Exposition Center. The LPFC is a separate entity that has the power to issue debt and the sole purpose of operating a hotel and convention center. In 2005, the LPFC issued bonds in the amount of approximately $180 million to build the facility. In 2007, the hotel opened within the corporate limits of the village of Lombard. Uh, 2008, 2009, uh, the economy took a severe downturn, distressed properties in terms of hotel and hospitality uh, were the norm. This property was not immune to that. And today, uh, while it's an operating facility, uh, it cannot cover its annual debt payments, which brings us to the discussion of the restructuring and support agreement. Common question around town uh, that I've been getting, at least in the three and a half years since I've worked here, is whether or not the village owns and operates the hotel and conference center. The simple answer to that is no. The village exists to provide core services to our citizens, police, public works, and fire. Um, I did not go to school for hospitality management, nor did our police chief or fire chief or public works director. The LPFC is the entity that owns and operates the building. So what's happening now? Why is the village board taking action this evening? Um, the village is gonna be one of the last parties to enter into the restructuring support agreement pending the village board's vote tonight. After that, it's our understanding that the Public Facilities Corporation will be filing a Chapter 11 restructuring towards the end of this week. Today, 
70% of the bondholders, and when I say bondholders, I mean total dollars of the debt, have signed on to the restructuring support agreement, indicating that they are in support of the restructuring plan. 30% are still on the outside looking in. Will the LPFC's filing for Chapter 11 affect the village's finances? No. This is a common question. We'll also cover it on some future slides. The LPFC, again, is a separate entity. What they do will not affect our day-to-day -day services or our finances. What is the village's contribution to the RSA? The question exists, why are we participating? What's needed from us? And the history goes back to $3 million that the village received at the time of the original bond issue. The LPFC bond issuance provided $3 million to the village, uh, which was used to upgrade the water mains. Yorktown Mall and the area near the hotel and conference center is 50 years old. That water main needed to be upgraded in order to support the operations of the hotel. The village will be reimbursing the LPFC this $3 million as part of the restructuring support agreement. I would clarify that that money will only be contributed if the restructuring is confirmed. In addition, the RSA um, requires the village to provide additional funds in the amount of $3.7 million for TIF eligible projects, assuming that the TIF district being considered at this point in time is approved. Why is the village contributing funds when the village does not own the hotel and conference center? Simply put, whether or not the conference center was ever built, the village still had to maintain the public infrastructure. There's construction going on right now on residential developments. It would have been an expense that the village's water fund would have had to carry, whether it was 10, 15 years ago, or even today. In addition, I would note the second bullet point under the current arrangement with the LPFC, two times per year, the LPFC asks the village for an appropriation to fund the debt service shortfall. We've done this 12 times where the LPFC has asked us to fund their shortfall and 12 times the village has declined that request. As part of the restructuring support agreement, <clears throat> if the plan is confirmed, the village will be released from any further appropriation requests, which will help us relative to our bond rating. We'll discuss that on some slides a little bit further along. How is the village going to fund the con contribution to the RSA? As noted earlier, there's $3 million in the village's water reserve fund. Um, that will be set aside to pay towards the RSA. Um, I would note the, the bottom bullet point the village's contribution will be spent on the LPFC property. This is not unlike other incentives that the village does for a Mariano's, uh, a Toyota. Uh, when we pay for infrastructure to put in signals, part of our incentive philosophy is to make sure that the money the village contributes is for bricks and mortar that exists within our corporate boundaries. This money will not go to pay bondholders. Will this RSA have an impact on taxes or fees? No, it won't have any impact on property tax, sales tax, places for eating tax. No tax increases as a result of this action. Will the village reduce service levels or eliminate employees to participate in this agreement? No. This is a common question I get from village employees trying to understand this property. The village will still have structural budget challenges based upon the state of Illinois and the costs that we have to bear day in, day out that Trustee Fultonevich and the Finance Committee is well aware of, has been working closely with the board. Those challenges will exist regardless. Participation in this agreement will not exacerbate that or bring things to a head any sooner. What would happen if the village didn't agree to the RSA? Simply put, there would be 
an unknown and uncertain future of the hotel and co conference center. We would annually, I'm sorry, semi-annually have the appropriation request and the village's bond rating at the low level of B would likely continue. Part of our bond rating is based upon the fact that we're asked twice a year to appropriate funds. If we're released from that obligation, it will help us get on a path to a better bond rating. Why is the hotel and conference center a benefit to the community? This plays into the fact of incentives that the village does, again, for retail businesses or tourist events or tourist locations. This is data obtained from the Convention and Visitors Bureau. Visitors spend over $100 a day when they stay in our town. We have over 130,000 night stays at the hotel and convention center in 2016. In addition, this property brings people that stays in other hotels, shop at Yorktown, shop at Target, and spend money in places for eating tax and sales tax, which helps pay for goods and services. The project, as noted, opened up in 2007. I think anybody that lives in town would recognize the renaissance and the improvements that have happened at Yorktown since then. A list of those include the shops on Butterfield, the restaurant row on the south end of the property, uh, new owners of Yorktown Mall that have invested over $20 million, AMC movie theater renovations, Apex 41 apartments, and if you've been out there recently, construction has commenced on the Graystar development at Yorktown Commons. It's no coincidence that these things have happened since the development of the hotel and conference center in terms of the investment around Yorktown. The village has a vested interest in making sure that Yorktown remains healthy. A map provided showing some of those improvements. How is the RSA in line with the village's assistance with other local businesses? The ECDC has a very sophisticated and thought out incentive policy that helps us attract businesses. Uh, Mariano's is due to open in <coughs> August, near the end of the month. We've also done incentive agreements to bring Von Mar as an anchor store to Yorktown. Um, we've done an incentive agreement to keep Lombard Toyota in town. Sam's Club, which is due to schedule to commence construction later this year. The incentives for Sam's Club, Mariano's, and Von Mar are all in the three to $4 million range, which is on par with the $3 million contribution under the RSA. What does the village intend to accomplish by participating in this process? The village wants to provide the assistance that it can to ensure that there's a continued operation of a first-class hotel and conference facility within our corporate limits. In addition, we hope to gain a credible roadmap towards improving our bond rating. We believe that participating in this agreement will help us to do that. So what happens next? As noted earlier, the LPFC intends on filing for Chapter 11 restructuring later this week. Uh, that is still a process. There are no guarantees at the back end of that process. There's other parties involved uh, that will have a say in this process. Any questions regarding that process should be directed to the LPFC as they are the ones that are filing bankruptcy. And with that, questions, comments, um, any other points of note? Reed? Uh, Scott, uh, will this be all available on our website? Excellent question, Trustee fulton Um So house cleaning items, that's a, a perfect lead in. Tomorrow morning, this information will be placed on the village's website. The PowerPoint, a uh, frequently asked question sheet. Um, it will also go out on social media. Uh, our intent is to bring people to the village's website so they can get into to detail on it. Uh, we will also be sending letters to local service organizations like the Rotary, the chamber and others and offer to go meet with them. And we're also sending a letter to all of the village committees that you work closely with, understanding that they are village residents and people come up to them and talk to them and we'll offer to go meet with them. In addition, I'll be meeting with village employees at three separate times tomorrow to brief them on this, 
understanding that if you work for police, public works, fire, or the village, people are bound to ask them. We believe our employees are ambassadors of the community, and we want to equip them to answer questions. Perfect. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Scott. Okay, uh, Sharon, why don't we go ahead and read uh, 170309. Restructuring Support Agreement. A resolution approving a restructuring support agreement by and among the Village of Lombard, the Lombard Public Facilities Corporation, ACA Financial Guarantee Corporation, Nuveen Asset Management, LLC, and Oppenheimer Rochester High Yield Municipal Revenue Bonds issued by the Lombard Public Facilities Corporation and authorizing the village manager to sign said restructuring support agreement on behalf of the village and to execute any and all documents on behalf of the village in furtherance of said restructuring support agreement and the terms thereof. Okay, and just uh, for the board, I will give you an opportunity after we, or if you want to do it in between the two, if you have any comments at all that you would like to make. But uh, that being said, I'm looking for a motion on this. We have a first by Trustee Ware, second by Trustee Whittington. Sharon, on a roll call, please. Trustee Ware? Aye. Trustee Whittington? Aye. Trustee Fugel? Aye. Trustee Floatsnevich? Aye. Trustee Johnston? Aye. Trustee Pike. Aye. Okay. 170310. Sharon. Budget Ordinance Amendment. An ordinance amending the village's fiscal year 2017 <coughs> budget ordinance to provide for an appropriation and budgeted line item relative to the village effective date contribution of $3 million. A return of the $3 million provided to the village by the Lombard Public Facilities Corporation, the LPFC from the original bond issuance by the LPFC for the conference center and hotel, for village water main and water system improvements, as provided for in section three of the plan term sheet attached as exhibit A to the restructuring support agreement relative to the conference center and hotel owned by the LPFC, approved by the village board on July 25th, 2017, subject to the effective date as such term is defined in section two DD of the a aforementioned restructuring support agreement occurring during the village's 2017 fiscal year. Thank you, Sharon. Um, I'm looking for a motion. With the waiver of first reading. Okay. So we're looking for a motion with the waiver of first. We have a first by Trustee Fultonevich, second by Trustee Fugel. Uh, Sharon, on a roll call, please. Trustee Flochnevich? Aye. Trustee Johnston? Aye. Trustee Pike? Aye. Trustee Ware? Aye. President Genorio? Aye. Trustee Whittington? Aye. Trustee Fugel? Aye. Okay. Um, at this time, I would ask if anyone on the board has a comment. I'll start over here. Bill, Bill, Mike, Sharon? I'm good. Over here. Dan, Reed? Sure be very brief. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to thank staff, the board, the community for their assistance. Uh, we didn't always, you know, ask for these challenges, but I'm glad that we were part of the process and part of the uh, resolution. So thank you. Thank you. Robin? No. Uh, I just have a real brief comment. Uh, this has been a long time coming. I can't imagine if we, maybe we do keep track of how many staff hours, board hours, board meetings. I know our attorney does keep track of his hours, obviously. <laughs> put the food on the table, Tom. But um, I just want to thank the entire staff for all their hard work in getting to this point for now. I want to thank the board for being, uh, being there and putting in their due diligence and, and trying to come up with a, uh, a solution. And you know, it's from tonight on, we move forward and that's the best we can do. So thank you. Other than that, I will look for a motion to adjourn. We have a first by Trustee Whittington, a second by Trustee fulton And Madam Clerk, with the roll call, please. Trustee Whittington? Aye. Trustee Fugel? Aye. Trustee fulton Aye. Trustee Johnston? Aye. Trustee Pike? Aye. Trustee Ware? Aye. Thank you, everyone, and good night. Good night.